Such a plan would permit the evaluation of individual projects within the context of cumulative, correlated actions designed to lead inexorably to the objective of adequate justification for U.S. military intervention in Cuba. So a nice logical buildup, a nice series, a logical series of events to take place that would make sense to the normal population. So when they have the mass media from Operation Mockingbird, where they had CIA people in the media to bring out top talking points and stuff, this they'll be able to make news stories and have the progression throughout the weeks and the months of instances that are happening and have it make logical sense for people. So that when it actually does occur, they're like, oh, okay, because that's because of this, and this happened, and this happened. But they can all be manufactured events, all of them, or maybe all, or close to all of them. So that's something to keep in mind, too, even in this day and age, because these guys haven't changed their pl their game strategy, you know? They still do, I'm sure they still do a lot of planning like this, because it only makes sense to do that. So number one, since it would seem desirable to use legitimate provocation as the basis for U.S. military intervention in Cuba, a cover and deception plan to include requisite preliminary actions such as has been developed in response to Task 33C. I don't know what Task 33C is. Uh, could be executed as an initial effort to provoke Cuban reactions. Harassment plus deception, deceptive actions to convince the Cubans of imminent invasion would be emphasized. Our military posture throughout execution of the plan will allow a rapid change from exercise to intervention if Cuban response justifies. So it's like they're poking and prodding the lion and just waiting for it to attack and then they're gonna be like, oh God, we're, we're injured or we're, we're the ones that are the victims, you know? That's very interesting. So number two, a series of well-coordinated incidents will be planned to take place in and around Guantanamo to give genuine appearance of being done by hostile Cuban forces. So A, instance to establish a credible attack, and again, they're not in chronological order. Number one, start rumors, many, use clandestine radio. Two, land friendly Cubans in uniform over the fence, and quote, to stage attack on base. Number three, capture Cuban friendly saboteurs inside the base. Number four, start riots near the base main gate. And they're gonna, those are going to be friendly Cubans. So just think about people on the news. If you see like radical people doing violence or doing a protest or screaming in the streets and doing all sorts of stuff, who knows which one of those people are maybe enemies of the government or friendlies to the government or allies to the government. That's interesting. Start riots near the base main gate. Friendly Cubans. That's interesting. Very, very interesting. So it's not just government agencies that are involved. So number five is blow up ammunition inside the base and start fires. Number six, burn aircraft on air base. Sabotage. So they're willing to blow up ammunition inside the base, start fires, burn aircraft on the air base? Where are they getting the funds to just be able to burn an aircraft? Oh, wait, never mind. They get it from taxes. Or they just get it loaned to them by the Federal Reserve. So cash isn't an issue for these people. But then when it comes to us, of course, we have to be the ones that are financially like tightening our belt and being responsible, right? It makes a lot of sense. So number seven, lob mortar shells from outside of base into the base. Some damaged installations. Number eight, capture assault teams approaching from the sea or vicinity of Guantanamo City. Number nine, capture militia group which storms the base. Number 10, sabotage ship and harbor, large, file, large fires, naphthalene. I'm not sure what naphthalene is, but maybe that's what they can use to uh, create the large fires or the sabotage a ship. So they're willing to completely sabotage a ship for this purpose. Uh, number 11, sink ship near harbor entrance, conduct funerals for mock victims. So this is what I was discussing in that message to all kids in public school when they had those fake sailors because they're going to conduct funerals for mock victims and that's going to be in lieu of if they go with 10 so number 10 was the sabotaging of the ship in the harbor and starting fires so then from there they would sink the ship near the harbor entrance and then conduct funerals for mock victims so that would probably be on tv <laughs> they would have a big old ceremony or get everyone all teary-eyed and 
fuming mad, you know. These Cubans, they sunk our ship and killed our men. But there's no one that died at all. It's mock victims. And so, letter B for this one is the United States would respond by executing offensive operations to secure the water and power supplies, destroying artillery and mortar emplacements which threaten the base. So, nothing has threatened them. They were, they're, it's a false flag. They're doing it to themselves. The U.S. is doing it to themselves, and then they're going to start destroying artillery and mortar emplacements which threaten the base, even though it hasn't really been under threat by an outside force. Letter C. Commence large-scale United States military operations. Yeah, they would love that, wouldn't they? Um, number three. A remember the main incident could be arranged in several forms. So that's the Spanish-American War, the big battleship, the main, went to Cuba and got blown up after like being there for like around a week or so. Um, supposedly from Sp the Spanish. The, supposedly the Spanish blew it up. So, letter A, we could blow up a U.S. ship in Guantanamo Bay and blame Cuba. We could blow up a drone that's unmanned vessel anywhere in Cuban waters. We could arrange to cause such incident in the vicinity of Havana or Santiago as a spectacular result of Cuban attack from the air or sea, or both. The presence of Cuban planes or ships merely investigating, merely investigating <laughs> the intent of the vessel could be fairly compelling evidence that the ship was taken under attack by the Cuban forces. The nearness to Havana or Santiago would add credibility, especially to those people that might have heard the blast or have seen the fire. The U.S. could follow up with an air slash sea rescue operation covered by U.S. fighters to evacuate remaining members of the non-existent crew. Ca <laughs> Casualty lists in U.S. newspapers would cause a helpful wave, a helpful wave of national indignation. So a bunch of non-existent people dying in a, a non-existent rescue operation is going to take place, and then they're going to have a casualty list of fake people, fake names, or maybe names of people that are already dead. Who knows? They can either come up with the names or just take names from someone else, and then they're going to have them in the newspapers of the United States, and that would cause a helpful wave of national indignation towards Cuba. It's unreal. We got number four. We could develop a communist Cuban terror campaign in the Miami area and other Florida cities and even in Washington. So this is where it's getting on the home turf. The terror campaign could be pointed at Cuban refugees seeking seeking haven in the United States. We could sink a boatload of Cuban Cubans en route to Florida, real or simulated. We could sink a boatload of Cubans en route to Florida. <laughs> Real or simulated. That's insane. We could foster attempts on lives of Cuban refugees in the United States, even to the extent of wounding in instances to be widely publicized. Exploding a few plastic bombs in carefully chosen spots. Exploding a few plastic bombs in carefully chosen spots. The arrest of Cuban agents and the release of prepared documents. Pre prepared documents substantiating Cuban involvement also would be helpful in projecting the idea of an irresponsible government so maybe I don't know enough about these incidences but think about maybe the the, the bombing during the, the marathon the marathon bombing like well now we shouldn't we kind of question that because they're talking about having documents that substantiate the Cuban involvement having a few plastic bombs in strategic locations and then having them maybe go off or maybe them being swooped in by the FBI to save the day, but then they still have the documents to show that they were trying to do this. Like, you gotta question everything. Cause they can, they have, they have the endless supply of funds to be able to do basically anything they want. So anything is possible. You can't take anything off the table cause look at how many things they have on the table for consideration for the whole development of this plan. It's not just a two things, three things, and then that's, that's all they were planning. No, they, this is a, team effort, they were collaborating, this is not just a run-of-the-mill type of thing that they're doing. So number five, a Cuban-based a Cuban-based Castro supported filibuster could be simulated against a neighboring Caribbean nation in the vein of the 14th of June invasion of the Dominican Republic. So I guess on the 14th of June, Castro invaded the Dominican Republic. So obviously the Cubans aren't perfect, the Cuban government's not perfect, none of these governments, I don't care about any of these governments, they're all bad to one extent or another. But 
We know that Castro is backing some subversive efforts clandestinely against Haiti, the Dominican Republic, Guatemala, and Nicaragua at present and possible others. These efforts can be magnified and additional ones contrived for exposure. So, yeah, he's not good. He's not a good person, but then they're going to add additional things or lie about other the ones that are already known. So, for example, advantage can be taken of the sensitivity of the Dominican Air Force to intrusions within their national airspace. Quote, Cuban B-26 or C-46 type aircraft could, could make cane-burning raids at night. This Soviet bloc incendiaries uh, could be found. This could be compiled with Cuban messages to the communist underground in the Dominican Republic and, quote, Cuban shipments of arms, which would be found or intercepted on the beach. Number six, use of MIG-type aircraft by U.S. pilots could provide additional provocation. Harassment of civil air attacks, or harassment of civil air, attacks on surface shipping, and destruction of U.S. military drone aircraft by MIG-type planes would be useful as complementary actions. Just the wording of this, just complimentary actions. You know, but this is a big thing. <laughs> this is talking about drones and planes and all this stuff. And So an F-86 properly painted would convince air passengers that they saw a Cuban MIG, especially if the pilot of the transport were to announce such fact. The primary drawback to this suggestion appears to be the security risk inherent in obtaining or modifying an aircraft. However, reasonable copies of the MIG could be produced from U.S. resources, from U.S. resources, in about three months. So, of course, this is coming out of our dollars, you know. And think about that. They're gonna try to paint an F-86 and to, sh to make it look like a Cuban MIG, especially if the pilot of the transport were to announce such a fact. Because guess what? If, the, if this actually occurred, this incident, and then we had the pilot saying that it's a fact, then Everyone that believes this is going to look at the people that are questioning it and saying, how, how can you say no? He, this, he's the pilot. He was the one that was in the attack. You weren't there, right? But it's like, look at this. They're able to create an event like that, or at least a scenario on paper that has that as a possibility. That's just insane. So number seven, hijacking attempts against civil air and surface craft should appear to continue as harassing measures condoned by the government of Cuba. Concurrently, genuine defections of Cuban civil and military air and surface craft should be encouraged. Number eight, it is possible to create an incident which will demonstrate convincingly that a Cuban aircraft has attacked and shot down a chartered civil airliner en route from the United States to Jamaica, Guatemala, Panama, or Venezuela. A civil airliner has that a Cuban aircraft has attacked and shot down a chartered civil airliner en route from the United States to a handful of these other places. The destination would be chosen only to cause the flight plan route to cross Cuba. The passengers could be a group of college students off on a holiday or any grouping of persons with a common interest to support chartering a non-scheduled flight. So anything that would make logical sense for these people to be on a plane crossing Cuban space crossing their land very very interesting right there that's a that's a big one so letter a an aircraft at eglin afb would be painted and numbered as an exact duplicate for a civil registered aircraft belonging to a cia proprietary organization in the miami area at a designated time the duplicate would be substituted for the actual civil aircraft and would be loaded with the selected passengers all boarded under carefully prepared aliases. The actual registered aircraft would be converted to a drone. Letter B. Takeoff times of the drone aircraft and the actual aircraft will be scheduled to allow a rendezvous south of Florida. From the rendezvous point, the passengers, the passenger carrying aircraft will descend to minimum altitude and go directly into an auxiliary field at Eglin AFB where arrangements will have been made to evacuate the passengers and return the aircraft to its original state. The drone aircraft, meanwhile, will continue to fly the filed flight plan. When over Cuba, the drone will 
will be, that doesn't even make sense, when over Cuba the drone will be transmitting on the international distress frequency a, quote, mayday message, stating he is under attack by Cuban MIG aircraft. It's an unmanned drone at this point, and it's going to be sending a mayday message. The transmission will be interrupted by destruction of the aircraft, which will be triggered by radio signal. This will allow ICAO radio stations in the Western Hemisphere to tell the U.S. what has happened to the aircraft instead of the U.S. trying to sell the incident. So instead of it seeming a little bit obvious by them trying to sell the whole concept of this happening, they're just going to have radio stations just tell the U.S. population what's going on. And they're going to be like, oh my god, we're, we're, we're just finding out about this too, you know? So number nine, it is possible to create an incident which will make it appear that communist Cuban MIGs have destroyed a USAF aircraft over international waters in an unprovoked attack. Letter A. Approximately four or five F-101 aircraft will be dispatched in trail from Homestead AFB, Florida, to the vicinity of Cuba. Their mission will be to reverse course and simulate Fakir aircraft for an air defense exercise in southern Florida. These aircraft will conduct variations of these flights at frequent intervals. Crews would be briefed to remain at least 12 miles off the Cuban coast. However, they would be required to carry live ammunition in the event that hostile actions were taken by the Cuban MIGs. Letter B. On one such flight, a pre-briefed pilot would fly tail and Charlie at considerable interval between aircraft. While near the Cuban island, this pilot would broadcast that he has been jumped by MIGs and was going down. No other calls would be made. The pilot would then fly directly west at extremely low altitude and land at a secure base in Eglin Auxiliary. The aircraft would be met by the proper people who knows what those people are. And I doubt they're really proper. Quickly stored and given a new tail number, the pilot who had performed the mission under an alias would resume his proper identity and return to his normal place of business. Just a normal day. <laughs> just, I'm just doing a little, helping with a little false flag attack, you know, acting like I'm getting shot down and I'm not going to be on my radio anymore to have people presume that I died. And then I'm just going to go back to my normal day job. The pilot and the aircraft would then have disappeared. So the guy has an alias, he's going to make a fake call, a distress call, saying that he's going down, then he's just going to fly low and just go somewhere else and get out and just get patted on the back. You, you did good following those orders. Good job. You did, you did your country well for democracy and freedom, whatever. So letter C. At precisely the same time that the aircraft was presumably shot down, a submarine or small surface craft would dis disperse for, or F-101 parts, parachute, etc., so the guy that went back to his day job, he's safe, as, safe and sound. He went under an alias during this attack. They're going to have a submarine disperse F-101 parts and then the parachute that he, like, jumped out of, you know, to before his thing was destroyed. And then at approximately 15 to 20 miles off the Cuban coast and apart, the pilots returning to Homestead would have a true story as far as they knew. Search ships and aircraft could be dispatched and parts of aircraft found. So just think about that one. That's good. That rattle your brain around this one. So they're going to have F-101 parts and the parachute and all that stuff. So they're going to have all this evidence that this has happened. Like proving that it has happened. So it's like I have to question everything now. Like <laughs> even if you guys have parts and all this other stuff and actual debris and all, this, all these other things. I have no idea if you guys, if it's a genuine thing. Or if it's something that's just created, like it's just not even part of it. It's not even part of the F, that F-101 the guy was flying. It's just a different F-101. Like that's insane. They're going to have a freaking small surface craft or a submarine. Just drop those things off. And the submarine makes sense. That's a good idea. Because it's underwater and then they just have it. And then it just goes away. And then no one knows that it had just dropped that stuff off. So the final page. Facts bearing on the problem. So number one, Joint Chiefs of Staff have previously stated that U.S. unilateral military intervention in Cuba can be undertaken in the event that the Cuban regime commits hostile acts against U.S. forces or proper property which would serve as an incident upon which to base overt intervention. 
which is their main goal. They want the overt intervention. Number two, the need for positive action in the event that current covert efforts to foster an internal Cuban rebellion are unsuccessful was indicated by the Joint Chiefs of Staff on March on the 7th of March 1962 as follows. So they wanted to have a internal Cuban rebellion first and if that's unsuccessful then they want to do the intervention for sure. So here's the quote. Quote, determination that a credible internal revolt is impossible of attainment during the next nine to ten months will require a decision by the United States to develop a, a Cuban provocation as justification for positive U.S. military action. Number three, it is understood that the Department of State also was preparing suggested courses of action to develop justification for U.S. military intervention in Cuba. So the Department of State as well. So that's one of the other agencies, I guess. And so, JCS 1969-303 and then JCS 1969-313. So that's what they are talking about with these two uh, like the previous statement and also unsuccessful Cuban uh, rebellion inside Cuba. So that's the two instances that they're talking about. So that's what those JCSs are, at least these two ones, the 303 and 313. So that's very interesting. So that is the end of this document. It's a, not that long of a document. Um, I already have a link to this document in my description of my previous video. But I'm going to definitely obviously going to have it on this one. And it goes literally straight to the document itself. And um, read it for yourself. If you guys have a printer, please print it out. Feel free to print this thing out. Pass it along. Uh, if you have anyone that's just a fervent United States supporter, show them this. <laughs> Highlight the things that maybe stood out the most to you. Just so they can take a quick glance of it, you know. Not have to read the whole thing. Um... Yeah, this is just really, really incredible. Um, and gives you food for thought. It makes you really maybe have a different viewpoint on just everything that the government does. And just now you have, like for me, it's like I'm, que I've, I'm questioning everything that they're doing and the justifications that they're having for doing anything that they're doing. Like how we have Saudi Arabia as an ally is beyond me when they're like one of the biggest funders of terrorism. But then we're going to say that... Syria is terrible or Libya is terrible. It's like, well, look at the people that we have as best friends over here. That's how we got the petrodollars because we made a big deal with Saudi Arabia. So it's like, just question everything, look into things yourself. This is an actual official declassified document. So this is like the source, like the source from them, like from the horse's mouth, basically. So always try to get that. So I really appreciate you guys watching. I'm so glad to be able to have this technology and the Camtasia software so I can actually do these kind of things with you guys because there was no way I was just going to read this with just you guys looking at me like that's just boring so I'm very glad I'm, I'm able to do this I'm going to go through some of these other documents too in, in upcoming videos and get a lot of these under my belt because I haven't read any of these like the Operation Artichoke or the Bluebird um, Operation Mockingbird MK Ultra. I haven't read that one yet uh, Operation Midnight Climax there's a lot of these and I'm sure there's even more that I didn't even list in my previous video. <clears throat> so I really appreciate you guys watching. It really means the world to me. And thank you for being a subscriber. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to upload to Steam it. Um, I haven't had much success yet. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on. i got to fiddle with how to do it still. I'm not sure how to do it. But um, I'm trying to get on other chan uh, other websites as well. BitChute, I'm trying to get on there. Just so I'm not on just strictly YouTube. Because it's good to put your eggs in other baskets as well because they can easily delete my channel at any time. So I really appreciate you guys watching this video. Hope you guys learned something, found some new information, and uh, take care. Have a great day, guys.